Hi students, I'm back with a dictation video today, practicing some of the modals from grammar video number four. If you haven't watched it yet, you should jump out of this one and go back to the grammar number four, talking about modals of advice, because those modals will directly relate to this dictation video. So let's get right into our practice here. Remember our common reminders for dictation. You should be trying to write down as much as you can. It's okay if you can't catch all of the words. Like I tell students in class, if you're able to catch 100% all of the time, then you don't really need to be practicing dictation. We're always going to practice the sentences multiple times. So if you can't catch it, wait for the second practice. You can't catch it again, skip it, leave it, and then you'll understand it after we review. The most important thing is to be patient. This isn't about speaking like an American. It's about adjusting your ear to hear those shortened, reduced pieces of pronunciation and better understand them when you're out in the community. If you're ready, we'll get started. So let's start with our first practice. Number one, we really ought to find out if we need it. We really ought to find out if we need it. We really ought to find out if we need it. We really ought to find out if we need it. Number two, I need you to tell me what I should have done. I need you to tell me what I should have done. I need you to tell me what I should have done. I need you to tell me what I should have done. Number three. You ought to try it sometime. 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 Number four. I told her what she should expect in class. I told her what she should expect in class. I told her what she should expect in class. I told her what she should expect in class. Number five. He ought to remember to bring those documents to his boss. He ought to remember to bring those documents to his boss. He ought to remember to bring those documents to his boss. He ought to remember to bring those documents to his boss. Last one today with number six. Should you really be doing that? 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 Come back to the beginning one more time for each phrase. Number one, we really ought to find out if we need it. Number two, I need you to tell me what I should have done. Number three, you ought to try it sometime. Number four, I told her what she should expect in class. Five, 
he ought to remember to bring those documents to his boss. And number six, should you really be doing that? Before we come to our review and explanation, take a moment to pause, check your punctuation, a little bit check your spelling, and read through your sentences to see if they make sense. Then let's jump in and check out our explanation. All right, let's start with number one. We really ought to find out if we need it. We really ought to find out if we need it. You hear that ought to. You don't hear the two T's in the middle. They reduce down to a sound of D. We ought to go. We ought to find out. The D at the end of find pushes forward to that vowel sound which is following it. Find out becomes find out, find out. We really ought to find out. You see the same thing happening with need, it. That D pushes forward onto the vowel which is following. We really ought to find out if we need it. We really ought to find out if we need it. Number two, I need you to tell me what I should have done. I need you to tell me what I should have done. As we've talked about in previous dictations, that D and Y together often results in the sound of J. You don't hear need you. You hear need you, need you. You don't hear a strong two. You hear a held in duh. I need you to go. I need you to, I need you to tell me. I need you to tell me what I should have done. This piece with should have done, we haven't talked about in a video yet, but we have talked about it off and on in the classroom. Remember that this is when should is taken and put into the past. I'm talking about an unreal, hypothetical past event. What I should have done. Should have can reduce down to should have what I should have done, and even more reduced, it becomes shoulda, what I should have done. I need you to tell me what I should have done. Number three, you ought to try it sometime. You ought to try it sometime. Again, that ought to, pulling down and reducing to oughta, my strong you, held back, becoming the relaxed, ya, how are ya, nice to see ya, ya oughta try it. With the try word, I just want to represent to remind you that very often in spoken American English, you don't have that strong T when there's T and R together in a word. You don't hear try, you hear try, try. And a little bit, I feel like they connect. Try it, try it. Like one word together, try it, try it. You ought to try it sometime. You ought to try it sometime. Number four, I told her what she should expect in class. I told her, I told her what she should expect in class. That H at the beginning of her is completely gone. You don't hear, I told her, I told her, I told her. A word of what? Again, that strong T is so often deleted and held back. I told her what becomes, I told her what, I told her what. I told her what she should expect in class. And again, that strong consonant at the end of expect pushing forward against the vowel on the word in. So instead of expect in, we have expect in, expect in. I told her what she should expect in class. Number five, he ought to remember to bring those documents to his boss. He ought to remember to bring those documents to his boss. By now I hope that this piece of ought to you've put securely into your uh, 
um, English vocabulary, remember that ought to functions very similar to should. He should remember. He ought to remember. And that poor reduction of ought to becoming oughta. I also think on this, in this sentence, we hear he and ought to push together. He ought to remember. He ought to remember. Again, we don't hear the strong to bring. We hear the reduced de bring. De bring. He ought to remember to bring. He ought to remember to bring those documents to his boss. Just like with her, the H on his is gone, and it's pushed together with the pre uh, preposition of to. So to his boss becomes to his boss. To his boss. He ought to remember to bring those documents to his boss. And then number six, should you really be doing that? Should you really be doing that? Again, we have that D pushing forward to connect with the Y through the sound of J. So should you becomes should you. Should you. Should you really be doing that? Doing, remember that the ing, ing, is so often cut short to in. Doing instead of doing, going, walking, thinking. At the end here, I've typed a question mark followed by exclamation. And while that's not a grammatically correct style of writing, it's very common in informal writing to show surprise mixed with unsure feelings, um, the feeling of shock connected with um, not being sure or questioning the answer. All right, let's look at all of them one more time. Number one, we really ought to find out if we need it. Two, I need you to tell me what I should have done. Three, you ought to try it sometime. Four, I told her what she should expect in class. Five, he ought to remember to bring those documents to his boss. And six, should you really be doing that? As always, students, let me know in the comments how you did, um, which ones were the easiest for you, which ones were the most difficult, which piece would you like additional practice with in the future. And then, as always, make sure that you like the video, that you subscribe so that you will get notifications when new videos are posted in the future. Until next time, students. Bye.